Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I've been noticing that my videos about the Canon XC40 Pro Camcorder have been getting quite a few views and comments, uh, which is good. They seem to be helping people out. I do think this is an incredible uh, professional camcorder. Um, someone commented yesterday saying that I speak too fast in the videos, so I'm going to try to go a little bit more slowly through the information here. Just, by the way, a quick diversion. The microphone I'm using here is the uh, Audio-Technica AT875R. It's a short shotgun. I picked it up only a few weeks ago, about 150 bucks, and it fits this camcorder much, much better than a full-sized shotgun. So that's my recommendation for a shotgun is find a what's called a short shotgun microphone. So um, what I want to talk about in today's video I have covered it before, but scattered over a couple of videos. I'm going to try to use this video to explain the audio settings on this camcorder in a little bit more detail. I'm going to assume that if you are using this camcorder, you're, in, you're going to be keeping the pro top handle on. Much as I do, I've actually never detached mine since I assembled it. I'm, I'm making that assumption because I think most people are looking for a professional, a professional camcorder are buying it for some kind of professional purpose and that the top handle with its XLR ports is therefore a big advantage to you. So I'm just going to bring it close to uh, the camera I'm recording this on and show you guys what there is to see here. So for each channel, channel 1 and channel 2, there is, firstly there is a switch here that says on off in the middle of the uh, top handle, okay? You would not believe how many times I have for whatever stupid reason said, oh, I better save some power and turned it off. Now that's actually really stupid because I don't think it saves any power once you have your microphone connected. It will, however, turn off the inputs from the Pro Audio, from the two XLR jacks, and you'll end up with internal audio, which is just so much worse than simply even a relatively inexpensive shotgun microphone. So my advice to anyone is if you, if, if you are using this um, for Pro Audio work, just keep this on because otherwise you're going to get back from your shoes, you think you're smart turning it off, and you're going to realize all your audio is scratch audio and sounds a lot worse. So for each of the two channels, you have independent switches for um, A here stands for automatic, M here stands for manual. Automatic, manual, channel one, channel two. So if you do auto, you're going to be getting automatic gain control, and I've actually found it to be pretty good, but the camcorder is going to be uh, adjusting the gain uh, dynamically and automatically. Now, if you want to go over to your um, manual uh, levels, you just need to swap the switch from A over to M. I'm going to do both channels in manual. And now, and you can use these little adjusters. And this is why pro camcorders are so popular. People love this. I love this. It's so much better than going through a menu. You can literally, and you can make these fine, tiny adjustments just to get the per perfect level. So I think a lot of people will agree that if you have the time to set manual levels and you're monitoring the audio with headphones and I'll show how to do that, then it's prefer preferable, I shouldn't say preferential, it's preferable to do manual. But just in case I don't forget, I'm gonna set mine back, I'm gonna set my gain wheel all the way back to minimum. I'm gonna set my channel one back to automatic. Um, the final thing to show is that for input one and input two, you have a three-way switch line in the far left, mic in the middle, and mic plus 48 volt on the right. So 48 volt is phantom power. So if you're using a mic that requires phantom power, like the Audio Technica, you wanna be over to 48 volt. If you are recording from a mic that doesn't require phantom power, uh, that's maybe self-powered or whatever, you probably won't damage it by giving it phantom power. That's not really something you need to worry about. But nevertheless, it's probably better just to have it set at the right setting for mic. And if you're recording into, and I had to ask on the Canon forums, what's the difference between line and mic? Line is for if you're recording a pre-balanced line into your camcorder, like you're shooting at a conference and you're getting a uh, input out of the mixer board, then you want to go over to line. So I'm going to keep mine the way I want it for shoots for a shotgun microphone in the shotgun holster that is requires phantom power. I'm going to put my... Uh, lines and put my switch over to mic plus 48. I'm going to make sure it's on automatic. I'm going to make sure the top audio handle is turned off. It's worth, if you're shooting audio for a whole day, it's worth spending 30 seconds just before you even hit the record button saying, is this on? 
channel one audio and then I always do a little tap test just to make sure that mic is live because I'll see the levels jumping. Now on the second side of the camcorder of the XA40 you have the panel number two and I'm going to have to just hold the camcorder to show you guys what's here. This is where if you're using a mic, a um, 3.5mm mic it goes, there's a mic input here and there is a 3.5mm output on the left here. I'm going to try if you can get that into focus. A little bit difficult. Yeah, you can see the symbols there. So on the left that's for uh, monitoring the audio and on the right that's for a 3.5mm microphone. Now what you'd want to do is if you're using that 3.5mm mic you're going to want to turn off the XLR inputs and just to show you I recommend using the inputs XLR inputs sequentially so you can see that my one and only microphone is going into input 1 rather than XLR input 2. Now the final thing to say and this is on the software level is that if you're using it like I'm using it with only one microphone and that's probably most people I reckon you're going to want to make sure in the menu settings that go over to audio settings yeah here we go okay I hope you can see this and uh, not me um, but in audio settings you're gonna have on the first page the first option is channel 2 input and you're gonna have options for input 1 or input 2 now think about what this is doing if it's input 2 channel input 2 XLR input 2 is gonna be recording independently if you go for input 1 it's going to be putting it over to input 1 so if I'm not mistaken from my recollection, if you use this out of the box, it's set as input 2 and that means that if you record with only one microphone like I'm doing currently, that's only going to record onto one channel and you're going to be left with one-sided stereo audio because the system is putting channel 2, which is blank, onto input 2 and therefore you've got a blank right channel. So that's, I've never used two microphones simultaneously, so that's the way I keep it. That's it guys, um, that will probably, hopefully, tell you enough to get going with this. There is a, another menu setting uh, for, and I'll just leave up for a, a few seconds on the screen, the table, it's a very detailed table in the user manual and it tells you all the configurations, if XLR is on, if there's a mic, if XLR is off, and there's a mic in the 3.5 input, it'll go you through all those options, but you kind of just learn this stuff through trial and error. It took me a few days to kind of come to grips with the top handle audio, the settings, etc. And again, I just, to save other people from the fate I've had too many times, I recommend before you go out on a shoot, if you're using it with a shotgun like this, make sure that bloody switch in the middle here, on off, is, is going on. Make sure you've got 48 volts, make sure you've aud automatic levels if you want it. Tap your mic a couple of times and just verify that that's where you're getting audio from because the scratch audio, the built-in internal microphone, is just really a lot worse and it's very easy to miss the switch being off, spend a whole day out in the shoot and then uh, you'll see that you have far inferior audio quality. hope this video was useful for other Canon XA40 owners. I'll post this in the wonderful Facebook group. There's a Facebook group called uh, Canon XA10 2040 Owners run by an Italian guy. I highly recommend it. Uh, if, you're, if you own a Canon XA40 camcorder, it's also open to the XA50, 55, 45. For anyone owning the series, it's a great resource. And uh, I'll put a link in the description. Definitely worth being in that community too. Thank you guys for watching. More videos coming soon.